Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield, and today we're going to talk fairly briefly about uh, one of the writers we're sort of we're sort of clocking. Uh, I thought there was a few writers I kind of wanted to just read or re reread throughout their careers as long as I if I live long enough. And one of the writers I've often enjoyed, we've talked about already, is John Barth. He's known as a fabulist, as metafictionalist. There's lots of things he's called, most of which don't help us, but. Uh, this is his first or second novel. I always get him confused. He wrote two novels when he was a very young man, his early 20s. Uh, we talked about the floating opera, and this was written about the same time. He wrote them both within about six months or a year, I believe. And they're very brief novels. This is my favorite of the two, and this is one of my favorite John Barth novels. It's the closest to a realistic novel by Barth, and despite the fact there's certain things about it that bother me, I, I re, I've reread this book many times, and I've always had a good time with it. It's a disturbing book, but it's also a very funny book, and it's a very well-written, clear, sharp book. It's also a great book to read to sort of see where he starts to go with his career after this and the types of books he writes. What I have in my mind, I don't know if I've mentioned this, is I was thinking I was going to try to reread, or I think I've read, I'm rereading all of these early novels of Barth. I'll probably skip Sotweed Factor, which is too long for me, but um, and read them all the way up to one book I have not read of John Barth, which is Letters. So that's kind of our long-range game plan with the John Barth uh, series. And uh, I've never read this book. I always felt I should remember all the characters. I, I've mentioned this. I forget books so quickly. And this is basically an, an epistolary novel, which is which is a, a correspondence between all of Barth's previous characters, including himself, John Barth, who is also a character in one of my favorite and least favorite books by Barth, which is Chimera, which is the, the play on mythology. So that's where we're that's where we're heading for after we finish Chimera. I think we'll try to spend a, a few weeks on that. I don't want to say too much about it. The End of the Road. It's the most realistic of his books. It's very similar to The Floating Opera. It's about a, uh, uh, it's, it's a menage a trois. It's a, a lone man who's an oddball, who's got serious problems of, of, of motivating himself. And he gets involved with a married couple at a university. And he starts sleeping with the wife. And he gets involved in a kind of interesting intellectual battle with her husband, who who wants him to, you know, he wants them to have free love, but he doesn't want them to have free love. And there's lots of arguments throughout the book. The central premise of the book, though, is what's most interesting, which is the Jacob Horner character who tells this story is sort of your ultimate 50s uh, uh, existentialist uh, construction of a human being. So he's he, he refers to himself as weatherless. He has no weather in his body. He has no intention. He has no personality. He's simply a f in this flux of, of experience, and he can't make decisions. And he has just, at the, as this book opens, he's being released from a, 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 a mental institution where the doctor has uh, been running some, he's, he's running a radical, some sort of oddball theory, which I think it's called mythotherapy. And the, the premise of this doctor, who's basically an existentialist doctor, says that, well, life means nothing. Your personality means nothing. You just have to arbitrarily assign roles to yourself and the people around you, and that's how you get going. The only thing you need to think about as a human being is to act. It doesn't matter whether your actions are good or bad. You just simply must act. And when Jacob Horner, before the narrative of this book starts, He's been in the institution because he just went to, a, I think he's in a bus station, and he just sits there. He can't move. He can't make a decision. And this doctor finds him and takes him off to therapy and tries to instill in him a lot of behavioral, uh, again, the arbitrariness of behavior. And there's some very funny passages in it. When he sends up, this, this is the doctor. I forget the doctor's name. Um, what is, no, that's not... I keep calling him the doctor. Uh, page 88, I'll give you a little brief taste of the doctor. Who's Again, everything's written really clearly and sharply. So it's a novel of ideas, but it's a kind of comic novel of ideas. And he says to Jacob, the doctor, before he's releasing him, it would not be well in your particular case to believe in God. So God is a choice that you decide if it's going to help you work 
get through your life or not. And if it can't, then you don't you don't uh, do that. Um, religion will only make you despondent. But until we work out something for you, it will be useful to subscribe to some philosophy. Why don't you read Sartre and become an existentialist? This is the 50s when Sartre is just starting to get trendy. It will keep you moving until we find something more suitable for you. Study the world almanac. It is to be your breviary for a while, so just random information. Take a day job, preferably factory work, but not so simple that you're able to think coherently while working. Get a job where you don't have to think. Something involving sequential operations would be nice. Go out in the evening. Play cards with people. I don't re recommend buying a television set just yet. If you read anything outside the almanac, read nothing but plays. No novels or nonfiction. Exercise frequently. Take long walks, but always to a previously determined destination. And when you get there, walk right home again, briskly. And move out of your present quarters. The association is unhealthy for you. Don't get married or have love affairs yet. If you aren't courageous enough to hire prostitutes, then take up masturbation temporarily. Above all, act impulsively. Don't let yourself get stuck between alternatives or you're lost. You're not that strong. If the alternatives are side by side, choose the one on the left. If they're consecutive in time, choose the earlier one. If neither of these applies, Choose the alternative whose name begins with the earlier letter of the alphabet. These are the principles of sinistrality, antecedents, and alphabetical priority. There are others, and they're arbitrary but useful. Goodbye. And that's how he sends Jacob off into the world. So basically, to come up with some arbitrary way of dealing with any sort of situation you're in, you choose the left, or you choose the, choose the alphabetical earlier uh, item. Uh, and... Uh, as he goes off, he gets involved with this married couple, which is the one thing the doctor says not to do, and becomes part of this kind of uh, battle of wills with this other husband, with the other husband, with the husband. Uh, it's it's got a a streak of cruelty. So Jacob, there's a streak of cruelty in a lot of these uh, Barth books, and that is that the people don't. The central character of Horner is kind of a horrible person who's basically looking for nothing more than to justify his random existence, and his cruelty, particularly towards women, between, uh, between the cruelty of he behaves towards the woman, who I, whose name I forget, and the husband's behavior towards Rennie, the girl, is, is terribly treated, and is kind of gets in, the, in between this battle, this kind of, not an intellectual, a battle of ideas between the husband and Horner. And it kind of, as most of his books, I'm, I'm never, I've mentioned this, I'm not satisfied usually with uh, the end of most metafictional novels, because you're basically tying everything up in bows. This is a little more of a, a nasty ending, and it's also a, a, a nastier book. It's more rooted in the world than anything else, I think, that, that Barth wrote, and he leaves it quite behind. What he doesn't leave behind is this notion of mythotherapy, that's, that we simply choose stories, and we choose what to do with those stories. So that's where he goes after that. He really basically takes... Uh, that idea of creating our stories and taking mythological constructions and mythological archetypes and putting them into nice, interesting patterns until we get to this hugely complex pattern, which I've avoided until recent, until now, uh, letters, and he does a couple of others, uh, uh, Tidewater Tales, which I have all, I've also not read. So that's where we're heading towards. And we'll see him, probably the next one we'll do will be, uh, the, I think, a really interesting book, Chimera, uh, which is three, which is a set of novellas and stories, and uh, being and who's telling the story becomes more and more complex as you move through the book. You remember in Giles Goatboy or Giles Goatboy, the, um, the the who's telling the story of the, of this bat, massive mythical uh, narrative is always the is the central game of the book. Um, we know who's telling the story here. That Jacob Horn, kind of an unpleasant man who sort of disappears into nothingness. At the end of the book, I won't. I don't think that gives away too much. All right, so just a brief one today, and we're going to gear up to read. Hopefully, in the next few months, we'll do Chimera, and then uh, get down to a real kind of monumental, but I would imagine quite entertaining uh, letters. Okay, bye.